When you look into the diaries kept by Louis XIV's physicians from 1647 to 1715, it quickly becomes clear that during his lifetime, the Sun King experienced some serious health problems. It is surprising Louis escaped death for so long, if you take into consideration the treatments he was subjected to. In this video, we'll take a look at the health problems of Louis XIV and the gruesome ways in which they were treated. If you consult the Journal de Santé du Roi, which was faithfully kept by his successive doctors, you quickly realize that the flattering paintings which exist of the king are nothing more than an illusion. Louis' health during his early years was fragile. He could have died at the age of five of smallpox, at the age of 19 of typhoid fever, at 45 of a fistula, but he did not die before he was in his 70s of gangrene. In between the major illnesses, Louis suffered from minor ailments which we can read about in the Journal de la Santé. Malaise, dizziness, vapors, constipation, indisposition, for which Louis XIV endured potions, purges, enemas and bloodletting. The health records of Louis make mention of scarlet fever in 1658, dizziness and sweating, which began around 1662 and tormented the king until the end of his life. In 1663, the king suffered from a bad case of the measles. In 1676, Louis' teeth were in an appalling state. Not only had all the abominably decayed teeth of the king's upper jaw been pulled out during a botched dental procedure, but the badly carried out intervention had opened a hole in the roof of the king's palate, had broken off a part of the king's upper jaw, and thus opened a hole in the roof of the king's palate, with the result that whatever Louis ate or drank flowed out through his nose. For years, Louis XIV put up with the complication caused by the dentistry, but in 1685, the quote, strong and almost cadaverous odor that accompanied his affliction could no longer be tolerated and the Sun King's physicians proceeded, obviously without the slightest sedation, to close the hole by pouring molten iron into the cavity. It would take Louis XIV several months before he was able to resume the rhythm of having his meals in public. He'd suffer from an extremely foul smell from his mouth for the remainder of his life. In January 1686, Louis XIV complained of a small ailment on his private parts, which was not sensitive to the touch and which did not prevent any of the natural functions. Soon, however, the ailment started to cause the king pain and he was forced to bed. In May, an examination revealed that the king was suffering from a fistula. Physician Félix de Tassy, a clever, intelligent man of sound judgment, suggested surgery would be the only option to cure the king's ailment. The physician studied Louis XIV very carefully and examined the diseased area several times. He then carefully read all the available notes that had been collected for him on operations of the same kind. After that, he searched out people who had the same affliction in hospitals and even in the army and practiced the procedure on them. The date of the operation was set for November 18, 1686. Louis, once again without sedation, survived the operation after which he was bled from the arm. Shortly after the surgery, surprising as it may seem, court ritual was resumed in order to dispel any rumors that might erupt. The day after the surgery, Louis XIV held a short council and allowed the ambassadors to come and greet him. Although initially the surgery seemed successful, after two weeks Félix de Tassy noticed that he had just missed hitting the root of the disease with his scalpel. So on December 7, he was obligated to operate for a second time. Louis XIV stoically endured this second procedure, which was even more painful than the first. However, this time Louis was wiser and he took his time to heal before resuming court ritual, allowing the wound to close in the best of conditions. On Saturday, February 11, 1687, 85 days after the first operation, the king was well enough to leave his apartments and walk around the Orangerie again. 
By now, the king suffered from various skin diseases, boils of a very nasty nature and gout. He had indigestion issues that often forced Louis to leave his council, Madame de Maintenon's drawing room and very often the table. During the course of his life, Louis XIV was bled extensively 38 times from the foot or arm. From 1647 to 1715, counting an average of two per month, and that's not much, he took nearly 2,000 enemas. Liquid iron was poured into his mouth and his physicians experimented with every medicinal potion and broth available to them. You cannot help but wonder how Louis XIV was able to govern, attend council meetings and keep court ritual alive, to wage war or to hunt. Due to Louis XIV's health issues, it is safe to assume that the king appeared less imposing in reality than he did in the paintings that we now know. But the king withstood not only numerous illnesses, but also the gruesome medical and surgical procedures carried out on him up to an advanced age. Eventually, it was gangrene that killed Louis. It was in early August 1715 that the king, returning from hunting, complained of pain on his left side. Louis's left leg began to swell and the pain increased. Despite the debatable efforts of several quacks that were called in to provide the king with a miracle cure, Louis XIV died on September 1st, 1715 at 8 o'clock in the morning. Thank you for watching.